A lot of people who go through life these days feeling stressed, anxious, burned out, exhausted. They would like to ease things just a bit. The question is how? Brooke McAllery knows how they feel. She is a blogger and or a blogger, podcaster, writer from Australia, and the author of the new book, Slow, Simple Living for a Frantic World. She's with us here on 207. Thanks for coming in. Nice to have you. Oh, it's lovely to be here. Let's start with your story. Six years ago, you write, you had what seemed like a great life, happily married, wonderful husband, one child mm -hmm. already, another one on the way. You had your own business, and yet you were miserable. Despondent. Yeah. Why? Uh, because I had everything that I thought I needed, yet I felt trapped by it. Because every time I got the next thing that I thought I needed or wanted, I would discover that just behind it was the next thing. You know, the next thing to buy, the next thing to achieve, the next goal to kick. And it was, I felt trapped. You were talking to a counselor who said, have you considered doing less? Right. What was your reaction? <laughs> I was offended. <laughs> <laughs> Initially I thought, is that an option? You know, is that genuinely an option in today's world? But then I, I was just offended by, by the, what I felt was the suggestion that I couldn't cope with the busy pace of modern life. You know, there was something wrong with me. That's not what she was saying, but I, was, I had created this identity that was so much aligned with how much I could get done in a day and how tired I was and how sleep deprived I was that someone saying, hey, maybe you could do a little less of that, felt like a personal attack for a moment. What did you do? What was your first step towards trying to just gear things back a mm. bit? I, I googled, uh, how do I simplify my life? <laughs> that was literally the first <laughs> thing I did. Uh, and I discovered this, this whole movement called minimalism, uh, and that drove me to start decluttering. I couldn't do anything else that they spoke about. I couldn't meditate. I couldn't sit quietly. My, my brain was was a really unhealthy place at that time. But what I could do was start to remove some of the excess stuff from And you started to remove a lot of stuff. Yes. You actually kept count for a while. Yes. How many things did you get rid of? Uh, 25,000 things initially. 25,000. Correct. Initially. Yes. <laughs> Not at all. Initially. No, I stopped counting after that. <laughs> that. That felt like a, you know, I had slipped back into my goal kicking, goal oriented kind of striving life. Uh, and that seemed counter to what I was trying to do. But initially, keeping count really did motivate me because every car load that went to a charity shop felt like a release for me. So that's a good first step. But obviously you needed to go farther. What did yes. you do in addition to decluttering? So after I realized that decluttering was going to make a difference but not change my life, I actually sat down uh, a couple of years after I began decluttering and wrote my own eulogy. Uh, because what I realized, I had been making these changes and simplifying my life, but I didn't necessarily know why I wanted to, other than I was desperately unhappy. So I sat and I wrote my eulogy at 32 years old. Uh, I hadn't thought about my death at all, uh, but I realized over the previous couple of years I hadn't been thinking about my life and the way I was living it either. So by sitting down and, and thinking about what I wanted my life to look like over the, you know, the next, God willing, 60 years, it really pulled into perspective the things that were important and the things that really weren't important, the things that I was wasting my time and energy on. And I think that was the moment that I shifted from just not, not just decluttering, not just simplifying, but slowing down and, and living the kind of life that was full of things that were important. The book is filled with guidance and ideas about how people can slow down their lives. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, well, it worked for her, but it won't work for me. Let's start with just one example, technology. You say yes. it's a choice to have the phone on the dinner table. It's a choice to be responding to emails at 11 o'clock at night. What do you mean by that? Well, I think there are times where we need to be on call. I will say that immediately. It's not going to apply to everyone at all times. But there are times where we do choose to have our phone in our pockets when we're not at work and we're not on call and we don't need to be you know, instantly reachable. And that distracts us. It pulls us out of what we're doing and who we're with. So by choosing to remove our phone, choosing to leave it near the front door, it just removes that, that, that distraction or the tendency or the temptation of distraction. Uh, and I think that if we choose to be the person to respond to emails at 11 p.m. at night, then we set up the expectation from our employer or our colleagues that that will continue and then that becomes something that we're trapped by. So if we choose to develop boundaries for ourselves around technology, let's say we answer emails from 7.30 a.m. till 6.30 p.m. or whatever works for, for us personally, and then defend those boundaries, that's also a choice. Um, and it, it means that we're able to switch off. If you had just one tip to give to people to at least get started with slowing down their lives, what would it be? Find a very small part of your home that is cluttered, you know, the corner of a shelf 
and take five or ten minutes to remove the clutter from that space. Throw at what needs to be thrown away, um, you know, donate what you no longer want, and just enjoy that space that you've created. Brooke McAlary, author of the book Slow, Simple Living for a Frantic World. Thanks for being with us. We appreciate you coming in. We've got a link to Brooke's website with more information about slow living. You can find that in the 207 section of newcentermain.com and on, and on our mobile apps. And we'll be back right after this.